mistakes, but still I have found I may stumble and fall, but through it all, my God is still good. Cause mercy still flows from the palm of his hand. He gives me grace, helps me to stand. And although he knows how unworthy I am, my God is still good. sing again about those showers of blessing 225 there shall be showers of blessing let's stand together sing the first second and last 225 
old song there. Amen. Please remain standing now as our pastor comes. Ask Brother Randall Jordan, if you will, lead us in prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that we've experienced down through the years. Amen. we got a faithful God that loves us and saved us by his marvelous grace. We thank you for Jesus that took our place on the cross Amen. of Calvary. And he made it possible that we could be saved and go to heaven. That's right. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost yes. that gives us the power to serve you and please you in our daily walk. Amen. We do ask you to bless the service tonight. Thank you for the good singing already. Yes. Bless the pastor as he uh, shares the word of God with us that you'll give glory to your name. We pray for the lost that may be saved. And we pray, God, for, for missionaries around the world that they'd be faithful to serving God and witnessing for you. And we pray now, Father, that you call up more labors in the fields that's white in the harvest. We do pray you touch the sick and raise them up. And I pray, God, that you'll help us, everyone, to walk true to your word. And we'll praise you and thank you for what you do. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 And wave at somebody, smile at them, let them know you're happy they're in the house of God tonight. It's good to see you on this foggy, cold, uh, rainy night, but God is warming our hearts together. You've already been blessed by being here. And let me uh, say to anybody that might be here for the first time, if you lift your hand, the ushers will bring you a card and fill it out, drop in the offering bag. Master Club's downstairs, pray for the workers and the children down there, and then Sunday school, Sunday morning, at 10 o'clock, everybody planned to be here. We want to pray for the Brookshire family, especially tonight. Sister May went home to be with the Lord, but we don't have any arrangements yet. They say it may be next week before they'll know because some of the family are coming in from out of state. So y'all be praying for all those. And then on the prayer list, I'll read the prayer list. You can remember some of these. Jeremy and Jennifer Wakefield, Ann K., Brenda Alexander, Catherine Davis, Carol Clark, Carol Center, Loretta Fowler, uh, Roy Pettit, Zelda Bishop, Sybil Kelly, David Swanger, Walker Brookshire, Jack Thomas, Judy Moody, uh, Heather McKinney, Louise Carlton, Eric Stevens, Butch McCombs, Wanda Gossett, Faye Cleveland, David Taylor, Harold Taylor, Daniel Black, Brenda McCombs, Hillary Coster, Jack Bragg, Linda Jordan, Renee Brookshire, Rebecca Runyon, Norma Dixon, Barbara Center, Eunice Pridmore, and Ray Lee Bright. And then I just wanted to read you something here I got from uh, the uh, uh, Christian Action Network. The president, Marlon Mayer, wrote this letter, and he said that after school Satan clubs are beginning to infiltrate public elementary schools. He said the Satanic Temple which the, ha, has chapters in virtually every American state, he is launching a nationwide campaign to place after-school Satan clubs in element, elementary schools. He said already the Satanic Temple has their demonic clubs in elementary schools in uh, Utah, California, Ohio, Washington, Illinois, and Oregon, and they claim they're not finished. So he said for everybody to be praying, he's got some kind of a movement going to try to cope with that, and I'll be no telling you more about it later as I find out. I was not acquainted with this until recently, but we'll be praying. But listen, the devil, we're, we're going to be studying that in Sunday school, the great red dragon. That's the devil. And brother, he's going to have great power in the tribulation period for a short while, but his day's coming. But I'm telling you, he's moving fast to try to get our young people. That's what he's after. He can't do anything with you. He can't do anything with me. The devil has no way of getting us to deny our Lord. No way. But he can work on those little children. Boy, I tell you, my great-grandson got saved Sunday morning, and I like to have me a connection. I stood there and saw what God was doing. He hadn't been in Sunday school about four months, I think. Now, already our teachers have given him so much gospel that he asked questions about how to get saved. Nine years old, and then he got saved. Now let me tell you something, you keep them in Sunday school. You keep them in church. They'll hear the truth, and the truth will make them free. Don't you want all your family to be together in heaven with you? Throughout eternity, I do. And I'm claiming every last one of them that God will save them before it's too late. Ushers, you come. 
We'll receive the offering you give tonight, whatever the Lord might lay upon your heart. Appreciate what you've done, and we're kind of holed up on our sign. It's not our fault. It's because of the situation in our world, and they're behind on their jobs, too, by the way. They've got so many. And so let's just pray that God will get it up whenever he, uh, he wants it up. All right, Brother Jack, lead us in a word of prayer. Our Father, Lord, we come to you again today just to thank you and praise you for, for just being God, Lord. We, we praise you so much for saving our souls and for Amen. just giving us eternal life. Lord, we thank you for this church and for what it stands for. We just pray for every member in it, Lord, that you'd just bless them in a special way, especially those that are sick, Lord, and on that prayer list. And then, Father, we pray that you'd just bless our pastor and give him wisdom and knowledge and help him as he studies and prepares his uh, sermons, Lord. Just help him preach like he's never preached before. Then be with little Sammy and our choir and a musician. Lord, we thank you for them, and we just praise you that you'd bless them in a special way. Be with every outreach of our church, especially the little folks downstairs, Lord. We pray that you'd bless them. Then, Lord, again, we just want to thank you for what we're about to receive. For we give you praise for it all. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
just have to say that every need he's supplied. great singing tonight. We appreciate it from the choir and the special singers. Boy, I tell you, God, we have a God tonight that does supply our every need. 
and we are looking to him. I want to turn to Genesis chapter 1 for a few minutes tonight. Genesis chapter number 1, the first chapter, first verse, starting there in Genesis chapter number 1, first book of the Bible. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, and I want you to underline that, God said, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light, that it was good. Now, my friend, I want to talk a little bit tonight about God said, and also uh, in the beginning, God. So we got God, and God did not try to prove himself there in that first chapter, first verse, but he declared himself. You and I have to believe that. We have to go by faith. We don't, we don't have God saying, I'm going to convince everybody that I'm God, so I'm going to show you this and that and the other. Down through the years he did prove himself to be God, but he declared himself to be God in that first verse. And only God could create the worlds as we know about them today. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. In 1 John 1, verse 3, all things were made by Him, and without Him there was nothing made that was made, not anything made that was made without Him. So we can see a picture there in that creation uh, of another creation, the creation, the new creation that we have in Christ Jesus. That pictures that new creation in Christ Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or creation. And old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now the new creation, just like the old creation, are both of God. Now in other words, God had to take the initiative in both situations. God had to do it. You and I could not do it. And there were no human beings when he did the first creation there that we're reading about, or the restoration. That was not the first thing God ever created, but in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now my friend, we have two things here that I want to mention very briefly tonight. First of all, we have an awful state. And then we have an awesome, a great awesome superior. An awful state, first of all. And the Bible says, and I want to look at this, there was a uh, a disorder. He says that there was uh, the earth was without form. So disorder was the first thing we see about this situation. And there was, that means there was no arrangement. There was no body. There was no rule. There was no mode. There was no model. There was no shape. There was no perception. There was no purpose. It was just a chaotic situation. Now something gigantic happened, and we preached on this some time ago, I don't know how long ago, about what happened to cause that terrible chaos, chaos in that uh, situation that we're reading about. Now this is a picture also of the uh, condition of our spirit and our soul before God came into our life. Brother, there was no order in our way of living. We didn't have anything together. Things were scattered and things were un certain and all of this you remember before you got saved some of you may not some of you didn't live in on a rough side of life and so you may not know what I'm talking about fully but I know what it is to be so scatterbrained you didn't know which way to go I know what it is to be so confused you didn't know why you were in the world I remember that I remember how bad it was and how sinful I was and I couldn't do anything about it I tried my best over and over to do, do right and to do good. I wanted to do good, but I couldn't do good. So, my friend, we see right here the depletion. We see the disorder, but we see the depletion now. The earth was void. It was void. Now, there was nothing meaningful here in this situation. There was nothing to do. There was no way to do anything, and there was nobody to do it. And so this was a terrible, terrible state indeed. Now what a serious condition this was that we're reading about in Genesis 1, but this situation is also showing how really our spirit was before we got saved. 
nobody could do anything for us. We could not do anything for ourselves. So the situation was so grave that there was no ability, no ability to produce or to provide for the situation within itself. It could not do anything. It was just darkness everywhere, and it was a chaotic situation indeed. Now, we can't produce or provide salvation either. Men have tried to be good, do good. I listen to religions all the time for my own education, and I see so many religions today that are talking, do good, do good, be good. Matter of fact, I heard a man, a, a reporter last night, and he said, uh, he said that, you know, if you be good and try to be good enough, you're going to try to be good enough to make it in and all that. And I thought, man, how, how really duped he is, how deceived he is to think that you can do good and keep on doing your best, and you'll finally, and he mentioned the pearly gates, said you'll be able to enter the pearly gates, he hoped. But, my friend, listen, that's not what the Bible teaches. So don't be, don't be naive. Don't believe any of these people. Now, that was an educated man now, been to the greatest colleges in the world, had the greatest degrees in the world, and giving a speech and talking about being good enough to get, make it through the pearly gates. Well, brother, you can't be good enough to go through the pearly gates. It's the blood of Jesus that gets you through the pearly gates. Nothing else, absolutely nothing else. And so, my friend, we have here, there was nothing meaningful. There was nothing to really do. There was nobody to do it. And so it was a bad situation. So what a condition this was. And then we see right here that we can't produce or provide good. There's none good. No, not one. So how could you be good enough to go to heaven if the Bible says you can't produce any good? Within yourself and I within myself, we cannot produce any good. None good. None good. No, not one. And then over there in Romans chapter 7 and verse 18, in uh, me, Paul said, that is, within my flesh dwelleth no good thing. There's not a good thing about our flesh on its own. If we don't control the flesh, then we go into a chaotic situation ourselves. We get in bad shape ourselves. Now, lost sinners are void apart from the Spirit of God. They have a void that they can't understand. They sometimes try to seek to fill that void. I've read stories and testimonies, and I've seen preachers preach, and I've heard others say it, that they tried their best to fill a void that was in their life. They, get, they excelled in everything that they ever tried to do, but there was an emptiness in their life they could not satisfy. I always come back and think about Tom Landry when I heard him give his testimony, that very thing. He said he'd excelled in everything that he'd ever done, but there was something empty in him, void. And he said, but he met Jesus. And when he met Jesus, it filled that void. And it took care of that need uh, that he had in his soul. So my friend, I want to tell you tonight, if you've tried everything and you don't have the victory in your soul tonight, turn it all over to Jesus Christ. That's the man to go to. That's the God to go to. Turn it all over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all have sung about him supplying our need. I'm sitting there saying amen. Amen. He supplied every need. He'll supply every need from here to eternity. So we have the disorder. We have the depletion. But then we have the darkness. The Bible says here, darkness was upon the face of the deep. There is nothing satisfying about eternal darkness. And that is going to be one thing, I believe, uh, that's going to be the worst thing in hell. I believe that darkness in hell will be as bad as the fire in hell. Outer darkness. Cast them into outer darkness. And so that's going to be a terrible place to be in if you're not saved. And you won't go there if you're saved, thank God. But if you reject Jesus and die without him, that's where you'll be for all eternity. Now you say, Brother Sammy, that's not real. That can't be true. God wouldn't let that happen. Don't be fooled. God is offering everybody, and I've already preached it, and I'll preach it till the day I die. God gives every man a chance. I believe it with all my heart. How could God make a man and say, I'm not going to even let him know about me? I'm not going to let him know about heaven or hell. I'm not going to let him know anything. I'm going to keep him in total ignorance. And when he dies, I'm going to throw him in hell. That's not the way God operates. But if God pleads with that man, come to me. I've got life. I've got eternal life. I'll give you heaven. I'll give you Jesus. I'll give you everything you could ever want for all eternity. And that sinner says, God, get away from me. I don't want you. I don't want anything to do with you. 
Now then God will let him go to hell. He chose to go to hell. See, that sinner must come in repentance and change his mind about defying God and come to him in faith believing. God will never turn a sinner down. Hallelujah. I can't wait to preach Sunday because I got something on my heart. I want to preach it now, but I'll wait till Sunday. But praise God and the Lamb forever. Praise his holy name tonight because of who he is and what he's done for you and for me. And what we do doesn't alter, hallelujah, what he does. What we do and the failures we make, and y'all have sung about that tonight. You know, when we fail, God, he is still not failing us. We're glory. Listen, if there's anybody in this church tonight and you've fallen, you've fallen not from grace, but you've fallen into sin and you've missed your life up. Well, you know, there, there may be a way that it'll take a while. It may take a while for all of that to subside. But I'm going to tell you what all of those in this church to, need to do tonight. I'm telling you, everybody in this church tonight who's spiritual, we've got to forgive and we've got to restore those that have fallen. And let me tell you this, if you're here tonight and anybody in this church has all against you, not you against them, but they against you, God said go to them. That's the way to handle it. Go to that person and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I messed up. I'm sorry that I hurt you. And I'm sorry that you're mad at me for whatever reason. Whatever the situation is, go to that person and settle it. Brother, we had a little rift uh, recently, but that rift is over because I went to the source of it. I went to it, and in love, we've embraced. We embraced, and we forgave each other. And there's nothing between us, no problem whatsoever. It was a misunderstanding, and brother, we got it settled. Now, let me tell you something. That's the way to do it, but you got to be big. you got to be spiritual. You got to follow the Holy Ghost. You can't say, well, I hate her, I hate him, and I wouldn't go to them for anything in the world. You better change your attitude. Yeah. Brother, you're headed for some trouble you ain't never had before. If you won't do what God said, you're headed for some trouble. So I don't care how much pride it ha it, you have to get rid of, get rid of it and get it settled. Praise God and the Lamb forever. Jesus told why he came uh, into this world. In Acts chapter 26, in verse 18, he said to open their eyes. Boy, sinners are blinded. They're blinded. They cannot see. But Jesus said, I came to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness. To turn us from darkness. Huh. You remember how dark their soul was before Jesus came in? You remember how dark and miserable it was? Even in the daytime, it was dark until he came. And he turned us, hallelujah, away from that darkness and opened up the light, turned on the light, brother, where we could see. So he said, I came to turn them from darkness to light, L-I-G-H-T, and from, here's the cause of it, from the power of Satan unto God. I came to turn people that are lost and undone and can't see. I've, I've come to open their eyes and show them how the devil is doing that to you. The devil is controlling you, and I'm turning them to God. Amen. Jesus Christ turned us. That's what happened the night you got saved. That's what happened the day you got saved. He was turning you from the power of Satan unto God that thou mayest receive forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, uh, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. In other words, brother, it's a different life altogether. All of our sins are gone. Now we're saved uh, and we have something to look forward to in heaven. I'm getting close to heaven. I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it in my mind. I can feel it in my soul. I'm getting close to heaven, thank God. You are too. We're all getting close to heaven. But isn't it good to know it's there waiting for us? Isn't it good to know, hallelujah, everything's fixed up? You say, but Brother Samuel, what if you make a mistake? I make them all the time. What if you sin? Well, I think I sin too sometimes. Now, I'm not talking about I've gone back to drinking and cussing and carousing. I've never gone back to that. But I tell you right now, I'm not going to claim perfection in the flesh. I won't be that smart because, Brother, I know I'm a failure sometimes. But he isn't. He isn't. 
And then Satan is the prince of darkness, the Bible says. The prince of the power of the air. Now don't forget Sunday school, Sunday morning, we're going to be studying about the great red dragon. And so now man that's in darkness can be set free from that. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 6, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts. He has the very one that said, let there be light in the restoration in Genesis 1. It's the same God that said to you and me the day we asked Jesus into our heart, let there be light. And boy, it's just like turning the light on. I'm not kidding you. Of course, you know as well as I do. But in our hearts to give light in the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Pro, uh, Psalm chapter 82 and verse 5. The wicked, and this is what's pitiful, the wicked know not, neither will they understand. They don't know, but they don't want to understand. You talk to them, oh, I don't care anything about that. Oh, we don't want to hear anything about that. They are still lost. And here's what he goes on to say. They walk on. They walk on in darkness. The wicked are saying no to God, no to God, no to God. They go on. They don't know. They don't understand. So they walk on in darkness, and they end up in hell if they don't repent somewhere along the line. So this is an awful, this is an awful state. But let me notice in the next few minutes the awesome superior. I want you to notice the Spirit of God moved. <laughs> the glory. The Spirit of God moved. Now, there was a lot of movement going on, no doubt, but there was nobody like here to, or even anybody can compare with the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says the, the Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. Now, we notice in this movement of the Holy Spirit, there is an intervention. Now, there were probably many moves in the universe, as I said, but no, uh, nothing was here, nobody, and nothing else that could even compare with the moving of the Holy Spirit. Now, you and I, when we heard about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I remember being moved by my mama's prayers. I was moved by mother, my mother reading the Bible to me at night. I was moved by watching a preacher preach. I used to sit in church at Laurel Baptist Church when I was a boy, and I loved to hear preachers preach. And I used to sit there, sit there when I was a little boy, and I would look at that preacher preaching. I could tell you when I got home the color socks he had on. I could tell you the color shoes he had on. I could tell you the color suit he had on, the color tie he had on. I observed that preacher and was very, I really admired a man standing up preaching the truth. And I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about salvation. But I was hearing. I was hearing faith cometh by hearing. I hear him by the Word of God. I heard my mama. I heard the preacher. I heard other preachers. I heard a lot. I read a lot. But nothing moved me until the Holy Spirit began to move in my heart and began to convict me of my sin and began to show me in my lost condition and to open my eyes and to show me that I could go to Jesus and have salvation. It took the Holy Ghost. Mama couldn't do it. My friend, no man could do it. The preacher couldn't do it. All he could do was preach and tell the truth, but he could not change me. He could not change my heart at all. So God, the superior of all eternity, is all powerful. Now in order to come out of chaos, God had to do it. God had to move in. So we can make many moves in our life, but none can be a move like the moving of the Holy Spirit in our life. It's not evolution, creation, this silly thing of evolution. I've read about evolution. I've read the different theories of evolution, and all of it stinks to high heaven. It's so silly, so ungodly. And then, my friend, when you have somebody in this world with all the uh, things that they have at their disposal, all the opportunities, all the preachers, all the radio, TV preachers, some of them not worth anything, but some of them preach the gospel. But the opportunities are here in America, and yet some people are so stupid and so ungodly that they won't let somebody pray. They are in a bad way. They may have crossed God's deadline. I don't know. And I'm not talking about blaspheming the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about crossing God's deadline, and you can't get back. 
because you've gone too far. And I don't know where that line is. You don't know, and nobody knows. Only God knows when somebody goes too far. But anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus can be saved. And I'll stick with that to the day I die. I'll never tell anybody you can't be saved. You can be saved. Hey, these old hateful religionists that say don't pray, did you know Jesus died for that soul? Jesus died for that low-down, good-for-nothing God hater. Jesus died for them. And he'll save them the very second they repent and say, I'm sorry, I was a fool. And you are a fool. I'm going to tell you that. You may cause me in some uh, places not want me to pray, but you won't stop me from preaching this book. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell the world that right now. In order to get this thing right, we've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, In my flesh dwelleth no good thing, and there is nothing in our life that in the flesh that is good. So we have the disorder in the darkness, and then, of course, that darkness was uh, sure enough darkness I'm talking about. And then we have this great superior one, the everlasting God. In John 1, 13, the Bible says, born not, you and I are born not of the will of man, but of God. So we have an intervention. Then we have an infallibility. God said, God said, and there it was. When God speaks, it's done. Nobody can thwart what God says when God speaks. So when God speaks, it is done, finished, perfect. In Romans 10, 17 again, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, piercing to the dividing asunder of both soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. John 6, 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. The words Jesus spoke was not anything that a fleshly man could provide. It was what he could provide only, and that was spirit and life. And he promised us that whenever he got back to heaven, he would send the Holy Spirit to be in us and with us forever. In John 17, 17, he said, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word, thy word is truth. You and I hold the greatest possession in all the world in our lap tonight. We have some of this in our heart tonight. They could come and confiscate these Bibles. They could come and take all these Bibles out of this church, take my Bible off this pulpit, but they can't take enough out of my heart to keep me from preaching. They can't take enough out of my heart to keep on shouting the victory and keep on praising God because you can take this copy of the Word of God, although I would reluctantly let you have it. I wouldn't, yield it. I wouldn't just yield it up. I'm not planning to yield it up. I'm planning to hold on to this book till my go to the grave if I go before the rapture. And this old book's going to be on my chest, on my chest in that coffin. I got about 10 or 15 copies, but one of them is going to be on my chest. Now you say, uh, you're afraid when you get in the grave. I'm not afraid of that grave one bit. Oh, grave, where is thy sting? Uh, uh, there, uh, where is the death or the grave either one? They don't have any a sting for the child of God. No, I'm not afraid. I just want the company of a Bible in my grave. I got plenty of them. So I'll have one in there. I read at one time where I believe Frank Sinatra was buried, had a fifth of uh, whiskey uh, in his, on his chest, in his coffin. Well, you know, if he's in hell, that whiskey, is hate, he hates it now. He hates it now because that was his thing. Richard Boone, I heard him say one time, whenever I die, he said, y'all sitting around drinking and having a good time, pour one for me. Pour one for me. I've heard people blaspheme like that, curse like that, talk about God's things like that. The Bible says fools make a mock of sin. And you may make a, a mock of sin now. Uh, Jimmy uh, Dean, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean in his casket, he said in the casket it had, here lies one hell of a man. Whew. 
That's, I tell you, I, that gives me chills. How can you do something like that? How can you ever be that low down? I'll tell you what, on my darkest, drunkest day, I could never say something like that. I'd be afraid to. Oh, my friend, that people say things like that, and they just get by with it for a while, but when they get in hell for all eternity, they're going to say, I wish I hadn't have said I was one hell of a man. I wish I'd never been that big a fool. I wish I'd never even thought about that uh, jug of whiskey on my chest when they buried me. I, I wish I'd never done I, I'd done that. It'll be too late because let him that is filthy be filthy still. He'll be filthy like that for the rest of eternity. And brother, that's a terrible thing. But I'm telling you, even though there's an awful state, there's also a supreme being, a superior being that's greater than all of our sin. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And then not only do we have an intervention here in the moving of the Spirit and infallibility, but we have an intelligence in verse 4. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day and the darkness night, and, he call, and, uh, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, God made the daylight and he made the night. How many years ago? You don't know, but look, it's still here. Boy, that's an intelligent God that can make something that will last year after year after year after century after century. As they go by, we still have night and day. And I'll tell you something else. These goons like Al, Jor Al Gore, and they're talking about the climate change and the uh, earth heating up. I'll tell you when the earth's going to get hot. It's in the tribulation period after we're in heaven. God's going to intensify the heat on men on, in the tribulation and scorch them. They're going to be scorched, but they will not repent then either. They won't repent then. And so God will warm it up, but until God warms it, Al Gore's theory is all down the drain. He's as ignorant as he can be. He's another stubo. And my friend, our leaders in, a, in Washington tonight, you know that they are fools. You know they're going the wrong way. Many of our leaders are going the wrong way tonight because they don't know what you and I know. Now, God's intelligence supersedes that of angels, even Michael, the angel whose name means like God. He's a powerful angel. We'll talk about him Sunday in Sunday school. God's power wrought a great work that others could not do. No angel could do it. God's wisdom brought about a wonderful system, a wonderful system for the world, day and night. What could be better than that? In other words, it's dark up there right now, but wouldn't you hate for it to be like that all the time? So God, in the morning, and I get blessed every time I drive my car, and I see that glow, that glow in the east, I see it, and I know that the sun's coming up. And brother, that blesses my heart. And I can't help but praise the Lord for another day and for life and for health and for being able to see another daylight. I like the night. I'm a night person. I can get out there and do anything I want to do. But it's because we have lights. But what if you didn't have any lights? Now, when we were little, you had one lamp on a table, a, a kerosene lamp, and that's all the light you had at night. And when that lamp went out, when you went to bed, it was out. Then it was total dark. There wasn't a street light, wasn't a yard light, wasn't anything but a flashlight that you might be able to have, but no light. It's total darkness. And I used to hear them boogers everywhere. Man, I'd cover up. And Mom would have, in the wintertime, about eight quilts on that bed. I'd cover my head because I'd hear sounds. And they used to have those old steam engine trains instead of the diesel. And those old steam engine trains, you could hear them about a mile away going down the track. Woo! in the night and that off that give me chills and then i'd wake up some night and i'd be so afraid but then downstairs i'd hear my daddy go <coughs> clear his throat cough and i said well daddy's all right i'm all right knowing that i had a daddy that would take care of everything if i needed it brother i got a father now that takes care of everything everything i need I, he doesn't have to cough to tell me he's still alive Brother, I know he's alive. He lives in me. He lives with me every day, thank God. And so I depend on my Heavenly Father more than I do anything. 
And so God's intelligence supersedes every intelligent, intelligence. Now day and night are still here, as I said. Romans 15 and verse 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures. Comfort of the Scriptures. There's where you get your comfort. Now God's telling you right here in plain in black and white, comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. So whenever you get down, you feel like, oh, it's over. I don't have any chance of getting by this. I don't know whether I'm going to heaven or not. The devil tells you, you don't know if you'll ever make it to heaven. Tell the devil to go to hell. You're going to heaven. That's right. You can just tell him, go off. You want to go to hell? Go to hell. I'm going to heaven. I ain't, I ain't following you. I'm following God. And so, my friend, we have right here the patience and the comfort of the Scriptures that gives us that comfort. God's plan of restoration was successful then, and God's plan of redemption is successful now. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood, He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. He entered in once, and brother, He got eternal redemption all settled for you and me, for you and me, forever, forever, and for eternal redemption. So how could you ever get lost? Huh? He says it's eternal. He says it's forever. So we have the intervention here as the Spirit of God moves and in both cases. We have the infallibility. We have the intelligence. But we also have the intention. Why? Why such a creation? God made the land. He made the sea. Well, now, I don't know all the ramifications of that, but man had to live on the land or he would die. And God made the sea for his own benefit, for the man's benefit, to look at the, how busy the seas are and what we get out of the sea. Look at the food we get out of the sea. Look at all the things that God has made, and they were for our benefit, for man's benefit. In Genesis 1.11, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Seed is in itself and uh, upon the earth. So God made it fruit bearing. And I'm closing with this. God intended fruit bearing. God intended life. God intended all of these good things for the benefit of you and me. He intended, uh, my friend, to give satisfaction to man and, and, and man's soul. Has he done it? Has he satisfied your soul? He satisfied mine. I'm satisfied with Jesus. What about you? Now, God created, and then God created you and me anew when we got saved. Now we walk in a newness of life. We are here tonight because God said it. Sammy, how do you know you're going to heaven? God said it. God said it. And that's all I need to know. God can't lie. It's impossible for God to lie. Let's stand our feet. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this.